Hello, I'm Laura Jackson and I am the creative director of Glossette and I'm here to answer all of your interior questions. Today we're talking about art, prints and framing. How do you frame your art? This is such a big question because there are so many decisions that need to be made when you are framing your piece. I think first of all, start by looking at what you're framing. So is it an original piece of art? Is it a print? Is it a line drawing? Is it a photograph? Is it a handkerchief? And think about how you can use framing to enhance that piece. For me, if I've got an original piece of art and it's got kind of a, um, a torn edge like this, I think a box frame, I think that you can really only get this look by going bespoke and I'm going to talk you through more of the bespoke options. This is also kind of a floating frame that is a bespoke option and it means that when it's made it's all kind of sealed and it's just for that piece. If you are using a framer you pay for an amazing service so you can take in whatever you're framing and they will give you so many ideas, variations and options and help you decide what will look best. I always think if you feel quite overwhelmed, keeping things really simple is the best thing to do. I think if you've got an investment piece or something that you really love, bespoke would be the route that I would go down. If bespoke isn't an option and you're thinking about a budget friendly solution, then online you can kind of get made to order frames. Now I use a place called Easy Frame and they have great options, um, great ideas for mounting, different thicknesses, different types of wood, different types of finishes. If you're buying off the shelf, Glasset is an amazing place to go. The options are absolutely endless and usually very bright and very fun. This Wiggle Beauty is by Alma Frames. This beauty is by Batola Home and I think this frame complements the artwork so well. I kind of love the little bobbles here. It's a really nice deep green colour and I love the fact it's in gloss. Now this really is a wow piece. We've got a spring frame with a Lucy Mahon print and I really like how we've kind of pulled out the colour so we've got the mustard here and then the blue from the cup. But if you've got really plain walls and you just want that one focal piece of art to sing in a room, this is exactly the way to frame. Also, vintage frames are a really great cost-effective option, but I would recommend seeing them in real life just to check the patina and wear and tear on them. But yeah, they're great for budget-friendly framing options. For me, if I've got a piece of artwork or a photograph that I want to kind of keep small because of where I'm putting it, then I probably won't mount it. But if I've got a larger place to put the art and I want to kind of create the illusion of space and grandeur, then I will mount it and I will go quite big. If you're unsure about mounting, then I would always suggest going simple and going neutral. But if you wanna have a bit of fun with your mounting, then maybe you could match the mount to the print in a contrasting or complementary color or pull out a color within the artwork and use that as your mount colour. This is a really good example of, of how you could either do something quite simple and quite muted. So there's a kind of a grey background mount here with a really neutral wooden frame. But actually to kind of make this a bit more interesting, you could pull out the blue and do a, a blue mount and then have um, a green frame. And I think it's really exciting, especially if you're buying off the shelf, that you could frame it, say, in five to 10 years time completely differently, which would make you feel like you've got a new piece of art. There are lots of different places to buy frames. Your first option is going bespoke. So that is a frame that has been made to your particular piece of art. This is the most expensive option. Or you can shop online with a made to order service. Now I use Easy Frames because they've got a variety of different mounts and framing and it also gives you the option to kind of look at it online in advance so you can upload your artwork and have a play. That is always a winner for me. You can buy off the peg online. So Glassette, we've curated some of the best frames in the UK so you don't have to kind of spend ages looking for them. Or you can buy vintage, but I think buying in real life a vintage is much better 
better so you can see if it needs any repairs, what kind of condition that it's in, uh, if it needs any TLC. In a rental, you can use self-adhesive strips, command strips, which are brilliant because they can actually hold quite a bit of weight and once you pull them off, they don't leave any marks. So they're brilliant if your landlord says that you can't put up any nails. Or you can ask your landlord if you can put a nail in the wall and when you leave, just fill in the hole and paint it over. If walls aren't an option, then go for leaning, whether it's a mantelpiece, a countertop, or on a bookshelf like this. I love a gallery wall. I would adore one in my house, but unfortunately my husband does not like them and that's one argument that he has won. Don't worry, I've won lots more. From my research, the best information that I found out there was on a website by Emily Henderson because she gives you a very clear formula on how to do a gallery wall. It's even got a printout, which is amazing. I think from everything that I seem to have read and how I would do it is I would start in the middle and I would think about how to make it balanced and even. I wouldn't do anything without a plan or organizing on the floor, mirroring how it would be on the wall. I'd use masking tape, I'd use a pencil, and then I'd literally stencil it out on the wall where it was going. I'd use a spirit level to make sure all of my pictures were straight. And I would just have fun with it. I don't think you should overthink it. I think it should be a collection of your personal prints, artwork, photographs, but I would make sure I got my plan in place before I put anything on the wall. The best gallery walls that I have seen are ones that play around with colour, size and texture. So thinking about your vintage frames with something that's a kind of a bit simpler with your natural colours, with your coloured frames, lots of different types of art so from prints to photographs to anything printed that you found along the way whether it's a list or um, a letter that somebody once wrote you a menu for your favorite restaurant and leave space for the evolution of the gallery wall you don't want to do it all in one go you kind of want it to be a narrative of your life when i started glossette i really wanted to create a place where people could come and shop for everyday art and amazing prints because i just didn't feel that that place existed and things that make you smile things that you can gift to a friend things that you can gift to yourself that are affordable and bring you joy every time that you look at them. We've really thought about art for everybody's home, be it a photograph, a collage, a line illustration, an amazing print, and prices start from £30, so there really is something for everybody.